The gold logie went to that rarest of beasts, an ABC comedian who doesn't take endless green left political stands and is actually funny. In fact, Tom Gleeson's secret weapon was his hilarious mocking of the whole Logie's voting process. Here's a bit of his acceptance speech. Turns out I'm just uh, really good at manipulating the media to get people to do things for me. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, it's why we're all here. <laughs> so maybe I do deserve this award. Yeah, it was good fun. I'll have a bit more of that later on and surely what the Logies are all about. The award ceremony also lauded a retired ABC personality, the former Late Line, 7.30 Report and Four Corners host, Kerry O'Brien, who was given a Lifetime Achievement Award. And why not? The former staffer to Gough Whitlam became a television institution, mainly at the ABC. No one ever doubted his politics, but nor could they miss his interviewing skills. And he didn't let last night go without a whinge. The budget cuts to the ABC again and again and again, driven more by a desire to punish and by, the, by an ideological obsession than because the public broadcaster was inefficient. Fair suck of the sauce bottle, Kerry. ABC funding is locked in at more than a billion dollars a year. It's expanded into every nook and cranny in the country, running five television stations and iview, plus a plethora of radio networks and stations and myriad online and digital services. It employs more than 4,500 people on an average wage of almost $110,000 a year, crying poor at the ABC while every other media organisation faces real pain, not to mention constraints on government spending across the board. It all sounds just a little bit too precious to me. O'Brien also got preachy on a favourite ABC theme. For instance, 40 years after powerful evidence first kicked in that human-caused climate change threatened the world with an existential disaster, we are still stuck in the mire of drab, dishonest arguments that will come at great cost to future generations. And we, the journalists, have not cut through the fake news effectively. We have not properly held politicians to account. He's right, you know, but not in the way he imagines. It would be a good thing if the taxpayer-funded media especially stopped running alarmist nonsense unchecked, examined the predictions of people like Al Gore and Tim Flannery, questioned the Bureau of Meteorology's homogenisation of the weather records and perhaps ask serious questions about the costs and benefits of various proposed climate policies. More facts, less emotion.